it's um, been a kind of a different week for us. Um, in just a matter of a couple, three days, we've driven to Nashville and driven back. Then we had a funeral, which was a, a very emotional funeral yesterday. Then we got here this morning and tried. The place, first of all, had been used during the week. I don't, I don't know if um, if they rented it out for Thanksgiving or they had Thanksgiving, but we had to kind of rearrange everything. Everything was kind of out of kelter. Had to do that. And so, um, been interesting. But I hope that this uh, sermon today will um, allow us to realize that there are ups and downs in life, but there is also hope that we can look, look forward to. Now, you see up there the scripture, Isaiah 2, 1 through 5, but you don't know what the title is. Because I was late coming up with the title. And so with us being out of town, last Tuesday, I had to go to get the uh, bulletins uh, printed. So I told my wife, don't worry about putting down a title. I'll eventually come up with one and I'll share it with you. So the uh, title of today's sermon is Anticipated Hope. Two words. Anticipated Hope. Let's go to God. Father, uh, thank you so very much uh, for your blessings. And that we know that you are there always. And Father, I've had two funerals in the last couple of weeks. And we know, Father, because those who uh, were deceased, Father, believed in you. They trusted in you. And Father, as your word says, although they didn't, haven't received the reward yet, they will, it will be coming to them. Thank you, Father, so very much. And now as we uh, look at your word here for Advent, the first day of Advent, we just ask your blessings and that uh, you will help us to understand that and that there's always, always, always hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, we are in a period of time uh, for this particular year. No, we're in a time known as Advent. And you know, it was only just really, to be honest with you, a few years ago when I, I understood Advent. And I'm learning more and more about the term Advent. Advent is defined as the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. That's an advent to that particular thing. Uh, and uh, during this spirit-filled time of the year, Christmas, it refers to the coming and birth of Jesus. There are four Sundays leading up to the celebration of the birth of Christ, and they each carry a theme significant of significance of Jesus' birth. The themes of love, hope, peace, and joy. And this is something that we, we go through every year. Every year we look at these four, four themes uh, just before Christmas because Jesus is the source of them. Let me ask you this question. Without Jesus, could there be love joy, peace, and hope in the world in which we live now? Without Jesus, could there be love, joy, peace, and hope? I don't think so. Not true. Maybe for a few, those with an abundance of money, uh, they could buy their way into many, many different things. But for the average person, and even those you know, take the movie stars. They have all of that. What's the uh, football player named Bradley, Tom Bradley? Uh, he's divorced again. He's got millions of dollars. He married someone, I think, who had a lot of money. But now they're, they're broken up again. So just because you have money doesn't mean that you're going to have these. But we're talking about that love and that joy that doesn't bounce around this year, next year's out, next year's in, next year's out. We're talking about great love. 
that will be around for years to come. Today, we're going to look at hope, a thing that is certainly realized by the coming of Jesus into the world and one which certainly all mankind needs. We need hope that all man mankind wants and yearns for. In one form or another, all mankind yearns for such a time when all will be joyful, peaceful, hopeful, and all shrouded with love. Wow, what a time that will be. One thing, uh, one thing, or rather, let me back up. Our theme of hope is depicted in our text for today. Isaiah 2, verses 1 through 5. Uh, it describes a vision given by God to Isaiah about the last days. Uh, when the ways, habits, and antics of man will be suppressed and the laws of God's way of life will shine through. That's hope for all mankind. Let's take a, take a look now at I, Isaiah 2, verses 1 through 5. And this is some of the pointers that Kara brought through on uh, uh, speaking of life. Uh, she talked about uh, this same particular scripture. Okay, verse 1 of Isaiah 2 says, This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So we see, well, let me just read the rest of this. Verse 2, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills. All nations will stream to it. Many people will come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. <clears throat> the law will go out of Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will bear their, beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Verse 5, come descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now, we see here uh, in verse 1 that this is a vision that Isaiah had concerning Judah and Jerusalem, God's people. And it's uh, a vision concerning us too. Those of us who love the Lord and follow after Him. He didn't say a vision for, uh, he said for Judah and Jerusalem. He didn't say Argentina and Russia and Ukraine. They didn't all exist back then. Yes. He couldn't single them out. He didn't say for the United States, but this is a vision that he saw in the last day for all of, of us. Yes. Now, uh, going on in verse 2, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, yes. and all nations will stream to it. And again, Advent is described as the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. And as Kara mentioned on the Speaking of Life today, Advent also includes the second coming of Jesus. Advent has two fronts. It, Advent has the coming of Jesus as a baby when he came, and also the second coming of Jesus. Both of them as, are known as peers of, of the Advent. And Isaiah begins here in verse 2, he talks about the last days when the mountains are governments of the Lord will be from his temple 
established as the highest of the mountains, and it will be exalted above the hills or the lesser governmental powers, and all nations will string to it. That's a time in the future. All nations will flow into it. That will be a time of hope. And then verse 3 says, Many people will come and say, Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his way so that we may walk in his paths, the law, will go out of from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. People will be tired at that time of their old way of life. The fighting between political parties today is truly atrocious. It's truly, I don't see how you can look at it in any way else. They are at each other's throats. Yeah. The record-breaking killings year after year in all of our cities across the country, every year we're breaking records mm -hmm. for murders, for killing people, mm -hmm. for taking what doesn't belong to us because we want it. The pandemics that take so, so many people's lives. Aren't you tired of that? Immorality and total disregard for the law of the land and for God's law. People are tired of that. They're getting tired of that. Yes, the Lord will teach us his ways, they say, so that we can walk in his paths. That's what people are looking forward to. And then, the law will go forth out of Zion, the temple of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. And he, verse 4, he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many people. His judgment will go out between the nations and they will allow him to settle disputes for the many people. Now this is a time when people on their own will say it's time for change. Yeah. People will say this is what we want to do. We're going to go to where God's law is being taught and understood. We're going to get it straight from the horse's mouth now because we know that for mankind there's nothing but war. Yes, and he says, he will also dis settle disputes between many. Just think, if Jesus had been called in to settle the disputes or conflicts between Russia and Ukraine six, eight, twelve months ago, how many lives would have been saved? How many resources would have been reclaimed? What about the, the small disputes that we had the United States with China? What's the other country where, where uh, Jim Jim Yu, what country is North that? Korea. North Korea. North <laughs> Korea. <laughs> Sorry about that. What if we turned over our dispute? You know, it's kind of like a Cold War. It's going on and on. And they sent up missiles and they said, these weren't meant for you, but they said, well, you're practicing to hit us. What if we could turn that over to Jesus right now and he would settle it? Wouldn't there be so much less tension in the world? They say that, um, well, I shouldn't use that term, they say, but there are some Congress people, congressmen, that now need special uh, protection just from threats of people, we don't need that. Others are saying, we're, we're going to get you. They're sending threats out to them. 
verse 4b here says, uh, they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they uh, train for war anymore. Wow, what a glorious time that will be. Well, see, this was a vision that God gave Isaiah for the future, for the last days. And it's going to come to pass. So that's hope. That's something that we can, we can look forward to. There is the first advent when Jesus comes into the world as a baby and he lives and he grows. And then there's the second advent, the last, what happens at the end of the last days. He's involved in both. So there's hope with him coming into the world. This is a vision, as I mentioned, of hope that God given Isaiah. This is something we can look forward to because of the first and second advent of Christ. Let me share this commentary, commentary that I came across. I think you will appreciate. When the nations stream to the Lord's house for instruction, Yahweh will serve as judge and arbiter to resolve their disputes. This is not something that Yahweh will impose on them because they will have come willingly, even gladly, to learn Yahweh's ways and to walk in Yahweh's paths. While tensions will continue to exist among nations and peoples, they will look to Yahweh for guidance in solving these tensions, knowing that Yahweh will he resolved them fairly and gracefully. They will have confidence that he is the source of all truth. Just stop uh, and take a moment to imagine all the things that will no longer be necessary when the nations come to the mountain of the Lord to learn his ways and to walk in his paths. We will no longer need armies because we will no longer need uh, to wage war. We will no longer need machine guns, tanks, aircraft carriers, and warplanes. We will no longer need jails or prisons. We will no longer need locks or keys or burglar alarm systems. We will no longer need to worry about nuclear holocaust or suicide bombers. We will be able to allow our children to walk dark streets without having to worry about muggers or molesters. Wow. Remember when your mother used to say, you can play, but when that light comes on, you come home. <laughs> you had about 30 seconds. Once that light came on, you needed to be home. You won't have, your child can stay out to 10 if there's no school the next day. <laughs> and it's dark. And not worry about them, not work. If he gets tired and falls asleep in the park, you won't have to worry. You won't have to lock your door. We will not need protection against computer viruses or scam. Cyber crime will be a thing of the past. Most services uh, now rendered by lawyers will be obsolete. Uh-oh. Lawyers can go for the throat. Whether, whether you're guilty or not, we're going to get the money. That's what they say. Managers and employees will work in harmony. Unions will be obsolete. The list goes on and on. We can soon Assume that there will also be peace between individuals, that divorce will be a thing of the past. The text of Isaiah 2-4 is engraved on a wall at the United Nations headquarters in New York City, and that a large sculpture of a blacksmith beating a sword into a, a plowshare adorns 
the UN grounds. They want it. They advertise it and say, this is why we're coming together at the UN. But they can't get it. It's a desire. They can't get it because Jesus ain't in it. They can. They have these peace talks. Is it once or twice a year? They they go there and they sit around this big table. It's impressive. All the leaders from these countries and they talk and they talk and they talk. Half of them agree. Half of them disagree. You can't come together. Yes, everyone is looking forward to peace. There is hope. Well, there is hope for the future, but it will not happen without Jesus. Here's one other thing I want to share with you. I found it quite, quite interesting. Uh, in the remarkable French film, Jonax Noel, now I probably didn't pronounce that right, we see a lyric vision for what the world could be if only the one made incarnate in the womb of Mary could indeed lead the way toward peace and shalom. The film is set, the film is set in World War I and tells a true story. In World War I, trench warfare meant that soldiers from opposing sides were often in close proximity to one another. Mostly trench warfare led to some of the most sickening slaughter in battle anyone has ever seen. The British lost so many troops in World War I, mostly through trench warfare, that Winston Churchill said afterwards that theirs was a victory scarcely indistinguishable from defeat. They won, but they lost so much in that victory as far as lives. But one particular battlefield on Christmas Eve, 1914, the proximity of the trenches led to something very different. In the German trenches, one of the soldiers is a skilled tenor who at one point tries to lift the spirits of his fellow soldiers by singing a hearty rendition of Silent Night. Just as he is about to begin the second stanza, however, the soldiers are startled to hear that the bagpipe player in the nearby Scottish trench has taken up the tune. The singing continues until finally the tenor and the bagpipe bagpipe player emerged from their trenches to face each other. When the bagpipe player uh, plays a, uh, starts to play O Come All You Faithful, the tenor takes up the, the song in French. And now the bewildered soldiers in also the French trenches began to sing along. Finally, all the soldiers uh, emerged from their trenches in an important uh, Christmas ceasefire during which uh, they shared chocolate, champagne, brandy, and other treats, reveling for a time in their shared humanity and putting aside the horrors of war that otherwise leads them to try to kill each other. Did you get that? They're worshiping and praising Christmas. One tenor is singing. The opposite person in a trench plays a bagpipe. They finally meet. They're, they're praising God. Then the other enemy joins them. They're all singing. They're singing praises to God. They're singing, O come all ye faithful. And they're singing Silent Night together. Now, this is a time of peace when we can all come together and praise our Savior. Harmony 
in lifestyles. The teaching of his ways, the walking in his paths, the law of the Lord that will go out from Zion. This is the national and worldwide peace that only Jesus can bring. The anticipated hope of Jesus. What a time that will be. Thank you, Father, for your love, your peace, your power. We, we, we sang about it in some of the songs uh, that we sang earlier today. Uh, you're in, you're uh, wonderful. You're incredible, undeniable, uncontainable. Your way. Father, help us to understand that. Help us to walk true to you because the time is not far into the future when we will be experiencing these things. Thank you for the vision that you gave to Isaiah. We can look at it, we can read it and study it and realize that there is hope coming through our Savior. We pray in his name. Amen.